My remarks for both of these students will be relatively brief because they've both done enormously hard work in their presentations and they're going to tell you a lot about their lives and it's better to hear it from them than from me. But I wanted to tell you a few things that they may be too shy to tell you. <coughs> the first is that Diana has an amazing scholastic record. She's persevered all through school. She'll tell you a little bit about those challenges. She's now reaching high school graduation with an unweighted GPA of 3.950. Oh. A, weighted, a weighted GPA of 4.175. Yeah! And in some ways, this is the most ast astounding thing. As part of the committee, I looked at her transcript and I was looking and looking and looking. She's never had a grade below A. Never. She ranks 19 out of her class of 523. Woo! And she's active in a number of activities, most specifically Junior States of America, JSA, which is a political debate club. She'll refer that uh, to that in her statement. But this past fall, she didn't, she's too shy to, and modest to tell you, but this fall she won a trophy for best speaker at a statewide conference where hundreds of participants participated. I want to read you a little excerpt. She probably has never seen this, but a little excerpt from one of her teachers. Diana is one of the most amazing people I've had the pleasure of knowing. She is a kind-hearted, artistic, and funny. Diana is always thinking of other people, and she brings joy to those around her. Making people around her laugh at any situation is one of her strong suits. However, it goes beyond just laughter. She truly brings joy to everyone around her, and she makes you feel welcomed by her. As a student, she was always on top of her grades and asking me what she could do to improve or making sure that I was giving her feedback on what she turned in. She made a lot of effort in her work and she wanted to make sure that it, has, it was reflected in her grades. She truly cares about her learning and her grades and that will lead to a career path which she'll tell you about. And this is one of the similarities as I hinted at yesterday that she has with our second student. So I give you Diana Ochoa Ruiz. Woo! Hello and good morning. My name is Diana Ochoa Ruiz, and I am honored and grateful to be standing here before you all. I am one of the few lucky ones out of 10 kids to have received a full education spanning from kindergarten to 12th grade. And although that may not seem like much to brag about, in my family, where education has always been viewed as a privilege, that is an amazing feat. It is a result of years of hard work, determination, and perseverance. You see, I am the child of parents who only received a third and sixth grade education before they were pulled out of school to work. So the fact that I stand here today in 12th grade about to graduate high school, and with the luxurious opportunity to attend college, astounds me and fills me entirely with gratitude. Everything I have and everything I am is because of my parents. Through their hard work and sacrifice, they were able to bring my siblings and I to the United States, also we could have a chance at a better future. They willingly traded their own dreams and aspirations. Also, my siblings and I could have a chance of pursuing our own. Since before, <coughs> since before my family and I first migrated to the US when I was just a year old, my father had always worked in the fields. He would travel to the US for prolonged periods of time, leaving behind his family. Also, he could come work in fields of all sorts, including lettuce, melons, celery all so he could provide for us. 
for my entire <coughs> life, from sunrise to sunset, my father has spent his days spent over rows of produce. And the thing about having a relative as a field worker is that it has a ripple effect on the entire family. So although my mother did not work in the fields, she still awoke every morning before the sun had even risen to make and pack lunch for my father and my siblings before they went off to work, ensuring that each lunch was accompanied by homemade tortillas. Both my parents and I, both my parents have worked tirelessly to ensure that I have nothing but the best opportunities and I am reminded of this every time I glance at the permanent dark circles in my mother's eyes, and every time my father asks me to rub ointment on his back, and every time my heart breaks just a little bit more because I know they have endured all that pain, also I will never have to. <laughs> Seeing as my father would spend the entire day at work, it was left to my mother to help my siblings and I navigate and adapt to the new environment we found ourselves in all without knowing a word of English. Despite her best efforts, I still went into kindergarten with hello and good morning, being all I knew of the English language. This made my first year of school quite the challenge. I distinctly remember everyone being given a red folder in which we were expected to store all of our accumulated work and then empty out of the week. I, however, was never made aware of this rule. So a few weeks later, when my teacher began to yell at me, I immediately began to cry. I was clueless as to why I was being scolded because I couldn't understand a single word she was saying. It all sounded like gibberish to me. But thanks to the help of a bilingual classmate, I soon understood why I was being reproached. My folder was almost bursting at the seams from how stuffed it was because I had never emptied it out. That little experience has such a tremendous impact on my life. So much so that I have decided to dedicate myself to becoming a primary school teacher. I hope to break the long chain of field workers in my family and help create a better learning environment for all kids, and especially those who have to face the same struggles I have had to. But most importantly, I want to do justice to all the sacrifices my parents have made for me and show them that they were not made in vain. I would like to close off my, sh my speech by thanking the National Association of State Directors for Migrant Education for choosing me as one of the recipients of the Albert Lee Wright Jr. Memorial Migrant Scholarship. The scholarship has helped lessen the burden of the cost of college for my family and I, and I am eternally grateful to you all. I would also like to thank each and every single one of you in this classroom, in this room, and every single migrant teacher and counselor who has helped me throughout my life. It is because of my school's migrant program that I never went a year without school supplies and I was able to afford my AP classes. It was because of them that I was able to attend Junior State of America conventions where I was exposed to the world of politics and where the fire to fight for justice was ignited in me. It is because of them that I am able to walk the line with my cap and gown and it is because of the migrant program that I am able to afford and attend college. So I say thank you to every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. It is because of people like you and the help and guidance you provide that thousands of migrant students across the nation, including myself, are able to achieve our dreams. You all encourage, inspire, and empower me. Thank you. Lastly, I would like to thank my sister, Raina, for all she has done for me and for accompanying me on this trip. And above all, I would like to thank my parents who unfortunately could not be here today. The presence of everything in my life stems from the absence of it in their lives. The touch of my smooth hands reminds me that they are only smooth because my father's hands are not. One glance at the rough calluses that cover my father's hands and I am immediately reminded that I am here because of him. My entire life, my father's bent back has been the pedestal that has lifted me on to greater things. For that, I am grateful for all eternity. We have sacrificed so much and worked so exceedingly hard. And for that reason, I am proud to be the daughter of Reina and Jose Ochoa. Thank you. Woo!
Deanna, on behalf of the National Association of State Directors of Migrant Education, I want to award you this plaque commemorating this day, which hopefully will be, you will think about as a first step in your career to help other children and to fight for that justice that you've talked about. And we know the beautiful words you can craft will be an inspiration to many children and others. And I have a feeling you might be an author as well as a teacher. So, here you go. We have more. The folks from Instructional Access were not able to be here for this morning because they had to get back to their offices in California. But they did leave a gift for you. This is a group that's been a partner with us for many years. And um, they wanted, on behalf of all Farmworker children and their um, commitment to uh, bridging the digital gap, to award you this brand new computer um. You also get a backpack which will fit, the computer will fit in perfectly. You may want to give something to your sister. Because <laughs> we have more. And last but certainly not least, we want to give you a little bit of help on that path towards your future. So on behalf of NASME, I would like to give you a check in your name in the amount of $3,000. Thank you. 